In this video, I'll show how you can use the Leica S Type 007 in a tethered workflow with Capture One Pro. Capture One doesn't natively support the Leica S Type 007 for tethered capture, but using Leica's free image shuttle software combined with Capture One's hot folder capability, we can very easily and simply set up a stable and quick tethered workflow between the two. So first, to start off, we just need to launch the Leica Image Shuttle 3 software. You'll see it brings up a panel here, showing us the current exposure information of the camera. Going over to the Camera Settings tab, you'll see that we can actually control almost every aspect of the camera, from exposure mode, metering, shutter exposure, shutter aperture, exposure compensation, ISO, white balance, drive mode, even the precise focus on the lens. All can be controlled remotely from the computer. Going over to the file settings, we'll be shooting in the Leica's native DNG RAW format, full resolution. You could also shoot in JPEG as well, or DNG plus JPEG, but for our purposes, we're gonna just use the DNG only. And here you'll see, this is where the DNGs will be put by the image shuttle software as we shoot tethered. I'm gonna open up this dialog, create a new folder, and I'll call it Still Life. You can call the folder whatever you like. Click Open, and you'll see here, we're now gonna be shooting into the Still Life folder. We'll use the default naming, which is just picture and an index, which you'll see here, this is the, the format. So you can change the file name to whatever you like. You can change the start of the index to whatever number you like. And the next step we're gonna do is just go back to Capture One. In the Library tab, you'll see my external SSD drive that I'll be recording the images to. And I'll just say here, Add Folder, and we'll select the Still Life folder right there. Going up to the Camera menu, once we make sure that's there, yep. Go to the Camera menu, say Hot Folder Enabled, select the Hot Folder, which will be Still Life. We click Open. Now we are ready to shoot Tethered to Capture One. So all I have to do is push the shutter button here, or the shutter button on the camera. And very quickly, you'll see the image pop up on the screen. Now it should be noted, we'll show you here, that there is actually no dedicated ICC color profile for the Leica S. It just comes up as DNG file neutral. And you will actually notice if we scroll down under Leica, that almost every other Leica camera is supported, including the SL, which just came out, the Q, the M-Type 240, the R9 even, uh, the X, but not the S. So don't fret, uh, it actually is pretty solid support just with generic DNG. Going over to the adjustments area here, you'll see that our exposure, dynamic range, clarity, levels, curve, they're all zeroed out. So by default, the DNG, nothing will be set. But we can actually set a default DNG profile depending on either what you're shooting or for every file that comes in. So here, let's dial in the, I'll dial up some shadow, adjust the clarity. I'll drop the saturation a little bit, maybe pop the exposure just a touch. And on the curve, we'll put a little, little S in that curve to get a little bit of contrast. Now, if we take another picture, it will actually just zero out all the settings for us again. So we need to go here and actually say, save as default for DNG file, and then click apply. You do have to do that for each one of these panels. Otherwise, it'll only save the one that you've actually adjusted. So we're just gonna go through these, save as default for DNG, save as default for DNG, Now we're ready to take another picture. And as you can see, the next picture came in and it has all the adjustments that we actually set on the first image. So if we think our exposure might be off, I can actually go to my camera settings here. I'll dial up just a half stop down from eight to 9.5. And that shows through immediately. should also be noted that you can go 
into the sharpening settings, so sharpening and noise reduction also can be set as defaults for DNG files. As you can see here, other tools like uh, Moray, Film Grain, Spot Removal, unfortunately, cannot be set as defaults, but you can use them uh, to create a preset and, uh, and a style, but you would have to apply that manually. So our main settings here, exposure, dynamic range, clarity, levels, and curves, no problem, we can apply that. And you can also make some color adjustments too if you go into the color curves, for instance. I can drop my, my reds, and let's say that I want to save that as my new default. And I'll take another shot, and you'll see that all these settings are applied, and there's our image. To double-check focus, same as uh, any other file in Capture One, just double-click, and you see we have a nice sharp image, plenty of detail. So even in the uh, default DNG handling, generic DNG handling, uh, the quality is excellent with the Leica S and Capture One. So the next thing I want to show you is just kind of uh, the speed, the relative speed of tethering here. So the Leica S Type 007 can shoot three and a half frames a second. Let's see how well the uh, Capture One and my laptop here will, will uh, handle that. So here we go. So we fired off a burst. And you'll see, I shot about 15 some odd images here, 14 images. So Capture One is just taking a few seconds per image to bring them in. So they're actually transferring over the wire, over the USB 3.0 wire, faster than what Capture One and my laptop are able to render. So this is a latest generation Retina MacBook Pro 15 inch with a 16 gigs of RAM and a discrete graphics card. And we actually are using a uh, external USB 3.0 solid state drive. So it's pretty quick, but obviously there is some processing involved when we're talking about 40 megapixel files. But all in all, uh, very respectable performance. Uh, most sessions aren't going to be shooting that fast. So for a kind of a normal pace shoot, uh, these should be coming in in near real time. So it's really uh, quite an easy workflow. And uh, you can, as here, we can actually create different folders for different shots, for different setups. Um, you can change the file naming for different setups. And going back, just make sure that in the library, you actually add that folder. And again, in the camera menu, just then select the new hot folder destination, and you should be good to go. So it's a very simple, very stable, very quick workflow. The ability to control the camera remotely is, is pretty cool. Uh, if you have a photographer who's shooting in studio and using the camera handheld for, say, portrait, not something like this where camera's on a locked down on a tripod and we're controlling it from the computer, you can easily also just minimize this window, have full view in Capture One, and the photographer can control everything on the camera end. Uh, likewise, another cool feature that we like for digital techs working with photographers is actually the key lock setting, which is pretty neat. Uh, this will actually lock down the controls so that a photographer isn't able to change the shutter speed, aperture, ISO, anything on the camera. Um, so there's no accidental changes on a fast moving set. So it's a pretty cool feature. You can also uh, set mirror lockup. We can do a uh, live view preview here, which I'll pop up briefly. The white balance is obviously set for my strobes and in the studio, the lighting's not great, but this is a live view setup and we could actually uh, move around our focus point, refocus it however we like. And you can also shoot movies from here too. So that's it for the overview of shooting the Leica S Type 007 into Capture One by way of Leica Image Shuttle. If you have any questions, please leave me a question in the comment section and I'm happy to answer it. Happy shooting.